afternoon and thank you for joining us. We are the Women's Business Center Richmond and this is Winning with WOW. Um, I am your host, Dr. Danny, and today we have a phenomenal show for you. I, um, I always say party with a purpose, but today it is radio with a purpose. And I have with me here, Miss Alicia Randolph. She is the founder and CEO of Art of Me RVA. So um, we're going to get right into this, Alicia. Um, I always like to start with asking people if the only time that um, our listeners or viewers get a chance to hear something from you, if this is it, what would you want them to walk away with today? Um, knowing, number one, about the organization and what we're offering and how we're growing, how to connect and tap in with us, um, that is something that I would like for them to take away. And then also, um, just I would hope that the interview would want to get them involved in the awareness of mental health. Okay, so talk to me about it. You're the name of your company? Yes. Tell me why is it called Art of Me? So I am a dancer, but not only a dancer, I love to write, sing, anything art. I love it, you know. Um, I'm starting to get into painting and things like that. And I just feel like whatever I put out there creatively is of me. So I named it Art of Me, my art. Awesome, that is phenomenal. Um, so, you know, you are a local yes. uh, in here in the RVA area. You yes. grew up here. Yes. And um, talk to me about, you know, in our series, we talk to women CEOs. And sometimes there's myths associated with when you're running your own business. But there's also a, a little mystique about creatives of which you fall within that realm. And so I'd like for you to talk to me about what it's like to be a creative in a world of maybe like straight people. I don't know yeah. if, if that's the politically correct way to say that, but I, I have some creatives in my family and have some ideas. But help our listeners to understand what, you know, intestinal fortitude you have to have to be able to press forward and operate in your who you really are. Yeah, it, it's intimidating um, because you meet a lot of great, smart people who are already in the know, in the business. And, you know, for me, I'm just kind of coming into this world. Mm -hmm. And like you say, I'm I'm a creative, you know, I'm not really a business woman per se. And I'm kind of walking into that lane. Um, so it does get a little intimidating at times. Um, but you have to know what it is that you want. You have to know what it is that you're trying to accomplish and just keep going for it. And for me, whatever I don't know, somebody knows. And if they're willing to help me to learn it, I'm going to ask the questions. So, yeah. And we call this segment Fire Creatives. And um, it started with this idea that creatives are colorful people, like a flame is colorful, hot, innovative, create, you know what I'm saying? Walk to their own music yeah. with their yeah. theme songs. And, uh, but the other piece on the other side of that is about how um, a lot of times creatives, when they try to operate in a, what is the typical world of business, um, they end up getting fired. Do you have any yeah. fire stories? A lot of fire stories. <laughs> <laughs> I um, honestly, to be quite honest, it's it's very hard. It was it was very hard for me to keep a regular nine to five. Um, my biggest issue was I couldn't get there on time. <laughs> I couldn't get there on time. I could not get there on time. And like you say, it's kind of like I walk to my own music. You know, I, I wake up when I need to wake up, and you know. It's hard. It's hard for me. I mean, amongst other things, I have also, you know, anxiety and depressive disorders that I deal with as well. But, you know, that was the number one thing. I was I was great at what I did. Mm -hmm. I'm a big people person. I'm very outgoing. Um, you know, I could do the job, but I could not be on time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I think all of us um, sometimes deal with those kinds of commitments because it deals with other people's expectations expectations yeah, of you. Yeah. What I found is that creatives, um, they try to be true to who they are. So they don't conform to your expectations. Yeah. They are who they are. And I respect that about that. Tell me a little bit about, you mentioned, you touched on that you have some personal challenges. So just first give us the, give us the mission of Art of Me. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about you. Talk about um, what is the mission and the goal of Art of Me. 
So the Art mission, of me. Yeah, Art of Me, RBA. So our mission is basically to bridge a gap, to break the barriers that come with mental health awareness. Um, there's a, a big uh, gap right now for our youth and teenagers within the mental health world and the resources there you know, and not saying that they're not there, but maybe the community just doesn't know about them. Mm -hmm. And maybe there could be a better, um, we could do a better job at making sure that we're aware of the resources and maybe gaining better resources. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the bigger, the bigger mission. And then also to just offer art as a way of expressing yourself, because a lot of people don't know that for me, it, it's like, it's healthy for me. You know, it, it almost, it's a release. So a lot of people don't have, don't get to experience that often, you know, because like you said, we're working, we got kids or whatever, but how often do you take that time for yourself to say, I just need a moment to artistically just get everything out, right. you know? Okay. So that's the bigger mission and, you know, the purpose of Art of Me. And so if, um, how would, if people want to know more about Art of Me, yeah. RBA, how would they get to know more information about your organization? Um, so we have a website, uh, www.artofmerba.com. We also have social media, Instagram and Facebook, and it's the same thing, Art of Me RBA. Um, and so if you could reach out to me that way, you can, you can learn more. So can you tell me a little bit about your journey um, to a sound and solid mental well-being, i.e., you know, at what point did you realize something was wrong and then how long did it take for it to be properly diagnosed? I was 16. Um, I had some traumatic situations. Um, at 16, I was pregnant um, and I had suffered a miscarriage, but um, through that, I had actually um, attempted to commit suicide. Um, and that was when I actually found out. Now, I may have had issues well before 16, but that was the moment or the time in my life where it kind of boiled over, you know, mm -hmm. the stuff hit the fan, if you say, mm -hmm. so to speak. Uh -huh. um, so now fast forward to me being an adult with my own children, I'm just really getting the diagnosis okay. and the medication that I needed. Now that's half of, you know, that's like 15 years that I've right. gone without medication, without therapy, without anything. And I'm, I've been struggling, mm -hmm. but never knew why. Um, the other turn, turning point was I had a corporate job mm -hmm. downtown and I used to get up and go to work and I would notice that my fingers would tingle. Mm. And it all it was it, like it didn't hurt, but it was like somebody was was like sticking pins in my okay. hands. Uh -huh. So I went to my primary care, and I'm like, I don't know why this is happening, but you know something is going on. Uh -huh. And then she, you know, of course it was anxiety. So okay. I was having anxiety attacks and did not know. Wow. But again, without therapy, without a psychiatrist, my primary care doctor put me on medication, which may have not been even the right medication for me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It was just a quick fix. So now fast forward, I now have a therapist, I've seen a psychiatrist, and I'm on different medication, which is, which is working better for me because some of those medicines they give you put you to sleep and it just takes you out of who you are mm -hmm. and you can't even function. Um, but now, you know, I'm living a much better life. I'm not out of the clear, you know, it's a struggle every day. You know, you gotta make sure you do what you need but, to do. But you know, you know, just facts here, life happens mm -hmm. whether you're in a good place or you're struggling yeah and so I'm excited about the fact that even in the pain that you were dealing with in the emotional challenges you were going through mm -hmm. you gave birth to something beautiful yes. so can you tell me about the genesis of art of me it was born out of your pain but you were yeah. trying to reach out and connect to other people such that they wouldn't go so long can you talk yeah. about that yeah um, so again you know with my journey I just see and I speak to a lot of people who are going through things and i see a lot even with my own child i have a nine a seven and a four year old but with my older son he's expressing issues with emotional you know emotional things that he doesn't know how to express as a parent i may not know how to address it um 
as a person who deals with mental health, I may not be the best equipped to even handle it or address it. Mm -hmm. So now I've come into another role of trying to figure it out. Now I'm a parent trying to figure out my mental health and my child's mental health. Mm -hmm. So it was just a big deal for me. I mean, how many other children are going out here undiagnosed uh -huh. and growing up into an adult who is undiagnosed and it's a repeated cycle. So I just felt like I could be a person to step in and try to help break that cycle, bridge that gap to get the help. Awesome. awesome. That, that is, um, so, you know, it sounds like you have a call, like you, yeah. you found, so it's interesting. You were able to take some of your pain that you were going through and turn it into something yeah. that is, is healing. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think, um, we sometimes downplay, even in our community, we downplay the impacts of trauma or the yes. lasting effects. So another thing that you've done that I understand is pretty phenomenal is that you have started to have a mental health rally. Yeah. Talk to us about that. Yeah, I'm so excited about my rally. <laughs> That's my little baby. No, really, it's my baby. Um, and it's growing and it's exciting to see it grow. It started just as an idea with church members and I'm like look I'm at my church and I'm like can y'all just help me bring this idea to life and they were so kind and they helped me to bring it to life at my church and it was just it was a big deal like I'm like ain't nobody gonna show up for my little event don't nobody know me don't nobody know who I am what I'm doing and that was literally the case like I was calling around and I still had a corporate job at this time so I'm literally at my front desk I'm supposed to be the receptionist, but I'm calling mental health facilities, like just trying to get people to join on board with me. And they're like, well, why? Why are you doing this? Who are you? You, do, you know, what are you doing? And I'm just like, look, this is, I have a great idea. It's going to happen whether you're going to be on board or not. You okay, know? So, that's right. That's, that sounds like the creatives I know. Yeah, they go for it. That's right. It's going to happen. So, you know, I got a bunch of no's, but I got some yeses. And the yeses people came out and it was phenomenal and now I'm gearing on to my third year and people are still coming in like okay but it's getting bigger but and it's, better. Getting, it's getting bigger and better like I did it last year at Three Lakes and then Marco was like I think you're gonna outgrow this <laughs> so they gave me a bigger place so I'm like so tell me about what goes on at the rally yeah so we have professionals mental health professionals that come out and they're able to get um, vending spaces to give outreach and resources to the community and then I also have space for mental health professionals to speak at the rally but not only just the professionals but also the community so um, I also have some testimonials from some artists that come out and they speak as to why they do art um, and what their calling is for why they do their art and what their purpose is um, and a lot of them have struggles of mental health and that is a big reason why they are artists, why they are creative. It helps them. So uh, once, you know, they kind of came on board with it, it just, it started to be this big thing. So now we have the professionals with the community, with the artists, which I feel like is, is the all in all. You know, we have everybody in one location and now we can start to have some of these conversations that are needed from the community standpoint and the professional standpoint. That's awesome. I guess I keep saying this, Allison, after everything, and I apologize because I try not to get trapped into those colloquiums. It is just something that is phenomenal. It To me, it blows me away of how um, something can go from birth in three years to, and I experienced it myself last year, and it, more than just a rally, it was like a festival. Yeah. So, how much does it cost? A lot. <laughs> a lot of time, a lot of money that I don't have. But we make it happen. I mean, you know, every, you think about a big festival, you think about everything that's put into it. Yeah, but that know. was my call for you to talk about how you have these generous donors and that if anyone oh, wants to yeah. contribute to you, yeah. you have other yes, things. So, yes, so talk yes. to me about that. So, yes, if anybody would like to contribute, number one, we do have a GoFundMe um, that we are trying to get donors to give to us. Um, but with the rally, we need signage. We need um, materials as far as marketing. We need um, banners and 
flags and you know you what it look you know what it takes to actually make a festival look festive we need those things so if people are willing to um, join us and donate to us become sponsors um, we need printing we need flyers I mean there's so much so it's more than just money if they're yeah. if, if I make t-shirts mm -hmm. and I want to donate some some t-shirts um, to your cause that you yes. could then make available to your guests because the people who attend they don't pay anything yes, correct that's correct this event is a free event I don't charge for anyone to come to this event so it would be very very helpful if we could start to get some sponsors and you know some donations and things some more donations not saying that you know we're what about volunteers it. but in yes and volunteers we definitely need people to commit people that um, have the time to be able to be available for the things that need to be done within the organization Yes. So tell me a little bit more um, about the other things that you do. I know your flagship event is the uh, mental health rally that happens this year, September 18th. Yes. At the Henrico, Henrico Recre Recre Recreation yep. Center. And, um, and from 10 to 4. 10 to 10 4. To four yes. um, but you do other things throughout the year. Yes. I want you to talk a little bit about your um, my art and talk yes. a little bit about the blues Thing that you so do. I do um, so my art my art is actually for the youth I do a lot of youth um, geared events because that's who I'm trying to capture um, so my art is basically an event that I host for um, youthful artists to come out and basically the same thing with the um, the, 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 the mental health rally excuse me they are able to come out, showcase what it is that they do, show their art, show their talent, but also we give them that platform to speak to us and tell us why they do what they do, why they continue to do what they do. And then they can also address with us because sometimes as adults and parents, we don't always listen to what the kids have to say, but this gives them a platform and a time to be able to say what it is they need to say and get it off their chest so that we can listen to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then during the holidays, you yes. do something because again, we are trying to, you know, win with wow. Yes. That means that we got yes. things going on all we through do. the year, we and do. it's not just you know, it's not just that one thing. No, okay. we also do a holiday blues workshop, and um, unfortunately, because of COVID, we were affected by that. But we did it um, our first year um, at the um, Black Iris Gallery. And it was really, really nice. We had a um, saxophonist come out to play the, the blues music. And what we did is we created self-care boxes. Um, if you go to my Instagram, you'll see on my page that I create them myself um, out of wooden boxes and I hand paint them and I decorate them and things like that. Well, um, the boxes are for, for you to keep things in that as it pertains to your mental health or your self-care health. So for me, I like spiritual baths. I like my crystals. I like things like that. And that's what I store in my box. Um, so we made this holiday blues thing to create these self-care boxes because during the holidays, you know, some of us are grieving. Some of us are alone. You know, there's a lot of different emotions that we experience around that time. So I thought it would be nice to create this box where people could be able to go to during those emotional times, whether you put your prayers in that box or you put your you know your inspiration quotes in that box whatever it is but you can go to that box and pull it out and it's something creative that you made and it's beautiful okay yes i hear you so one of the things that i was struck by earlier i kind of wanted to get the story out about art of me i wanted you to be able to paint the picture mm -hmm. that you want people to see about that but there's an important part of it that has grown beyond that and that is the business element the business acumen that it takes to sustain what it is that you're doing and um, I, I would love it if you would share a little bit about the things that you are doing to close your gaps whether it is financial acumen whether it's leadership whether it's you know partnering how tell me a little bit about what you're doing to be that businesswoman that sure. mm -hmm. So I have done some partnerships. Um, one of the partnerships that I'm very proud about is with Tammy Mobley. She has the Real Girls um, Association where um, she has her middle school age girls that she um, empowers basically. And um, she gave me the opportunity to come out and, do, and it was virtual, but we were able to do some art therapy with them. So what we did was um, we did a drip session with them, drip paint session. and. With the drip paint, we make the colors associate with the emotions. 
So we have them choose up to three to five colors that go with the emotions. And based on the emotions, that's the colors that they choose, uh -huh. you know. So once they choose the colors and they start dripping their paint, then we start to talk to them and ask them, you know, why is it that you chose that color? You know, and some of the, you know, the emotions were like triumph or um, success and things like that. You know, well, why do you feel like you're successful? And some of them weren't, the, you know, weren't all nice. It wasn't all nice stuff. Some okay. stuff was, you know, it was, it was real stuff. So, you know, we try to get into that. Like, well, why are you feeling this way about yourself? Or, you know, what makes you feel, um, you know, unmotivated or, you know, just, you know, you don't have that confidence. Why are you feeling that? You know, we try to dig deeper and speak to them and bring it out of them, you know, and that way, again, they now have a piece of art that can, they can remind themselves of their emotions, how they poured them out, what they made, you know, what it makes them feel like, what triggers them to make them feel that way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big deal. Um, we've done a partnership with Yana, which is um, You Are Not Alone Women, and um, that is a single moms club, and we did the kind of the same thing with them as far as, you know, with moms, we have a lot of things going on, so we got them to drip their paint and pour out their emotions as well with them we did like a um like a mantra type thing okay. you know we like tony affirmations yeah yeah we did we did affirmations so we had um tony jones playing if y'all not familiar with that y'all should go check her out <laughs> uh, if you like affirmations she's great so we had that plan for them but i just like to do things to empower you know the youth empower women empower people in general who are just struggling mm -hmm. mentally you know, so those are some of the partnerships we do. I'm actually working on my own programming <laughs> within, um, with Next Up. Well, not Next Up, I'm sorry. There's a TA consultancy that I'm going through. Um, and Next Up is with Real Girls is with, but um, the TA consultancy group is basically, they help me to build my programs. Okay. Yeah, so that we can actually get into the school systems and have programs available to the people because we don't have that. That's something that we're lacking right now. So again, you know, like I say, we're kind of like a baby business. That's how I like to call it. I'm a baby business right now and I'm growing and I'm making some things happen behind the scenes that people are not even aware about. But see, this is the thing. As a... Um, a person whose entire mission as it relates to the Women's Center of Business, um, I would be remiss if I didn't correct you. Yeah. You are a business owner. Yes. They're not baby business. When Look, when there's time to be a small business, right. be a small business. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. But at the end of the day, you're a business owner. That means that you have responsibilities associated yes. with that. You're kind of, you have to manage outcomes. It's yes. not just all you know gamma, right and, that's what people yeah. see on the other side but you got to make the connection so that yes. you can generate revenue yes because if you don't generate revenue you're not gonna be able to have pay right. your expenses right right and like I said I'm a parent myself you know and this is my job and literally I'm building my brand I'm building my business I'm, I mean I'm building everything really from the ground it literally came from a piece of paper to now I'm actually walking into what I wrote down and so, well, and then if you didn't know, we are on the choice 105.3 and that is a spiritual station. And the reason why I bring that up is because you said you wrote the plan and now you're walking in. Well, that's scriptural, baby. Okay. You know, you read in the Bible, it tells you, he tells you to write the plan. Yeah. Make it plain so yeah. that those who read it can run with yeah. it. And that's what's important. Usually on our bossing up segment, when we do that. Um, we're talking with women business owners who have been in business for um, at least five years yeah. because they have um, found something that not only taps into their passion, their call, and their competencies, but they have found sustainability, and that's what's real important. When we started to put together and think about what we wanted to do on the creative side, it's it's hard because creatives are often transitioning. Yeah. You know, it's like as as business owners we go in and out of having a side hustle or letting our passion be our paycheck yeah. but with creative sometimes you you just you have the right have the right space yeah. and it's sometimes you 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 know you hit that wall where you say well am i gonna go get a corporate job um but uh, that, i've been struggling with that. okay that is something that has been on I literally was just having this conversation with a friend of mine. I'm like, you know, my mom's pressuring me to get a job. And, you know, the family's like, well, when are you going to go to work? You know, and I'm like, I got little babies. We just got our virtual schooling and stuff. But now's the time for me to figure it out because honestly, you know, I'm, I'm only three years into my business, but I'm not making the revenue just yet. 
So it's like, I guess they got to eat, you know, but if I do that, that's going to take away from me being able to build the business. Like I wouldn't be able to do these interviews or these networking events because that's what it takes. You have to go out here and meet the who's who to get into the circle to get people to support you, you know? Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I think also you, I would I would encourage you um, as we've been working with you with the Women's Business Center to think about what could, what what corporate play? Oh, oftentimes you can um, find doors that will open for your business that um, that may be a little bit more lucrative. Right. And um, think about those corporations. Of course, they have programs that they may, it may be a creative thing for them to bring in art therapy right. because work stress can be some of the worst stress in the world. Yes. And that may open a door for you. And so, so let's work on, I'm looking at that, but you know, at the end of the day, it really comes down to um, if you believe in it, it's, yeah. it will manifest. Um, you know, the, the value that you're bringing to your community and the effort that you're making to those who are helped. Yeah. Um, can you, you have any um, thoughts about, um, you remember it was in the news a couple of weeks ago. I want to say her name is Naomi Osaki, mm -hmm. the young tennis player. Who didn't want to do all of the interviews and stuff? I mean, she's a phenom. She beat um, the, the the Williams girl. I mean, and so she's had a lot. In her life just changed, and she blew up. And she just said, "Look, I need a mental health break. I don't want to just get off the court and go and have a microphone in my face." And she ended up pulling out of. I think it was the French Open. Um, can you talk to me about the pressures that? that you envision that, you know, in that situation, it, it was a national news story, yeah. her mental health. And it was like, athletes have mental health challenges. <laughs> right, like it's a... I mean, you know, can yeah. you talk, I mean, don't all of us have yes. some challenges from now and then? Yeah. What's the difference between just having a bad day and being, um, you know, manic depressive? Well, I actually, I deal with it every day and I've been dealing with it. I actually, like I said, I had to go get diagnosed. You know, this is something that you do have to speak to professionals about. It's not something that you could just say, oh, I'm having a bad day, so I deal with depression. That's not how that works. <laughs> or I'm crying today, so I'm depressed. That's not how it works. Like, I do encourage people to still see professionals and get the professional help. I, even though I've started this business and I walk in it, I don't know everything about it. And I'm still learning things about myself, about the disorder. I mean, everything in, its all, you know, in itself. So I just, I encourage you to if you feel you know if you continue to have bad days for like a month straight you may need to see somebody okay yeah. and, and and they definitely want to come out find more information about that there's going to be information yes. people and yes. uh, mental health professionals yes at the last minute just tell us about the the rally and the logistics again yes so Henrico County um, Recreation Center September 18th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Art of Me Mental Health Rally. Yes. And we have enjoyed being with you here today. The Women's Business Center Richmond, your host, Dr. Danny, on Winning with Wow on The Choice 105.3. Thank you. Okay, Mike. Perfect. He always says that. And I'm sitting <laughs> to myself and I'm saying, uh-huh. Until people say, yo, that was good. Until people say, oh. <laughs>